It's a matter of principles. Uh, the violation, the civil civil rights violation, the um, uh, let's say the, the crimes against humanity committed in the last 100 days have, uh, uh, they're not negotiable. And when we need to express ourselves to make the, the, uh, the international community aware of the situation right now in Venezuela. And that's why I would like to take uh, just a second to commend the work of all the, the media, and especially Al Jazeera, uh, on this regard. What do you see as the future for Venezuela if either the opposition does get its way or, as perhaps seems more likely, Maduro gets his new assembly and does rewrite the constitution? Well, to begin with, uh, Maduro's uh, government is an illegitimate uh, government. He's committed violations to the constitution, crimes against humanity, and therefore he's not recognized. As you've noticed, the 16th J uh, last Sunday, uh, there was a mandate uh, given to the National Assembly to actually uh, the, uh, not recognize the, uh, the power of this administration, and they have acted today very swiftly with a new decree uh, appointing a... Um, First of all, removing some of the, uh, these figures from, uh, from government and then uh, reappointing the new uh, justice uh, uh, judges, which is very important because there was no separation of powers. And that's very important to say so because it has become a, a dictatorship. And it's very important to mention as well to highlight that uh, Maduro uh, is a fraudulent and inconstitutionally uh, convening this uh, National Assembly. It is against the, the originary power of the people who are in the streets dying every day to try to amend all the mistakes and violations to our Constitution. Now, the United States, certainly the White House, Donald Trump's administration, has threatened sanctions against uh, Nicolas Maduro's government if it goes ahead and rewrites the Constitution. Do you think that's going to have any impact on the Maduro government? Yes, absolutely. And also the, the European Union, as I understand. The whole international community is aware and now will, will keep a very close eye on what this, uh, this, this last minutes of this government, who has, if, if they had any, any ethics, they would resign. And uh, I think uh, the US and the European Union uh, should act swiftly not even wait if he, if he uh, uh, ha goes ahead or not with this uh, National Assembly. They should impose these sanctions immediately. Arms embargoes to begin with, and of course, um, the, without limit. They, we have to act together to free our country from this uh, totalitarian regime that is uh, l trying to uh, change the Constitution illegally. We, be, we have to be very clear about that. Everything that he's doing since he violated the Constitution as well as the uh, 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 Supreme Court, it's invalid. So regardless, what we have to attend now in the disobedience, civil disobedience, which is in Article 350 of the National Constitution in Venezuela, is to abide by the National Assembly, who will take over as a transitory government. And if you allow me, please, uh, very humbly, I would like to suggest the National Assembly to include the resistance, the youth in the streets that have, has made this possible. They should be part of this plural uh, uh, transitory government. Just very quickly, you've made quite a significant choice in your career. You were in at the United Nations in New York as a senior diplomat for Venezuela. What kind of impact is this decision going to have on you and your family? Well, what I'd like to be clear, and I think you said it perfectly, is that I am here representing my country, not this government. And, uh, well, uh, I believe um, that I'm doing the right thing. And uh, in principle, it's very important to act according to, to your principles. And uh, my family is right behind me, and they know that what I'm doing is for the best of, of, of the population of Venezuela. And we need immediate humanitarian corridors. Uh, we are lacking of, of all kinds of medicines and food with a, a, a rampant inflation of at least 2,000% for next year. So we need, to ask, uh, we need to act fast, and this is why I was able uh, to, to make this resignation. And I must say, just to clarify why it took so long after 100 days, I didn't have a passport, and I needed a passport to have a nationality identity. And at the moment I received my passport, even though I have not been act, uh, acted in the United Nations since the Ocean Conference more than two months ago, I have not uh, uh, taken any place because I cannot be hy right. hypocritical speaking for, from a government that, that has violated every human right and guarantee possible, knowing that we're sitting in the uh, Human Rights Council. And also, if you see uh, 
in the um, decolonization committee. We are chairing the decolonization committee, and we're not even able to uh, give the, the, the right of self-determination to our own people. So it's very hypocritical, and by principle, I cannot act in it.